Welcome to GNR Central. And, you know, we already know that Guns N' Roses have partially reunited back in 2016. But if you guys go 10 years before 2016, there was a lot of rumors going around that Guns N' Roses were going to reunite that year. There was a lot of turmoil going on with Velvet Revolver and the band was supposedly about to fall apart. There was different band members like Matt Sorum and Slash who were rumored to be going back to Axel and taking part in a summer reunion tour. But how did we exactly get there? And that's what I want to explore in today's video. Now, it wasn't just the drugs that almost ruined Velvet Revolver, but it was also management decisions, not just by the band as a whole, but also by some certain members. So according to Slash's book, he said when Velvet Revolver got signed, got our album together and set out to prepare, basically prepare a tour, we underwent a change in management that I didn't agree with it at all. That eventually led me to find my own manager separate from the band. In theory, that sounded like a logical solution to me. But all that did in reality was alienate me from the rest of the guys and cause a great de degree of animosity amongst us and amongst the management teams whenever a business arrangement came up. This situation added an extra level of stress that two years on the road did nothing but escalate. The tension never affected our chemistry on stage or creatively, but on a day-to-day -day interpersonal level, things were touchy. And basically, by the end of the tour, um, everyone was at one another's throats. I stand by my decision, but I understand now that it made me a pain in the ass to the rest of the band. It wasn't just the drugs and the management stuff either. They had to throw in another wrench, and that was Axl Rose. So Slash said it was around this time that Axl chose to send out a press release that did nothing but add fuel to the fire, and it's been widely documented, so I won't do it justice by getting into all of it. But in short, Axl released a statement claiming that I'd come by his house extremely coherent early one morning to ask him to please settle the lawsuit between us that had been ongoing for years at that point. It's also claimed that he and I talked for a while and that I had nothing but disparaging comments to make about Scott Weiland and everyone else in the band. The truth is, I haven't spoken a word to Axel personally since I left the band in 1996. I did go by his house one night, but I was drunk, Perla wasn't, and she was driving. I walked up to the door and delivered a note that read something like, let's work this out, call me, slash. But I didn't give it to Axel, I gave it to his assistant. In any case, Axel released a statement, and it was a big deal in the press because it was the first time that Axel had gone public with his opinion about me, the lawsuit, or anything else like that. And as I've said, this incident was widely reported in the press and on the internet. Now anyone else who is interested can go read all about it if they choose to do so. The fact of the matter is, this incident and the resulting negative effect it had on Velvet Revolver was extremely unsettling to me, and I can barely even talk about it still, let alone recreate it in detail here. I thought I was going to see everything I just finally gotten together fall apart. Now on top of that, Scott Wallen released his own statement belittling Axel. And in 2006, almost on April Fool's Day, it almost seemed like a joke, but there was a rumor that Slash had quit Velvet Revolver, removed his gear from the studio where they were rehearsing, and was rejoining Guns N' Roses. So according to the article, Slash spent time at a Los Angeles recording studio on March 31st, 2006, laying down a guest guitar solo on an album from an up-and-coming female singer that was being produced by one-time GNR producer Mike Klink. So Slash reportedly responded that as far as he knew, he was still in the band despite rumors to the contrary. Now as previously reported, rumors of trouble in the Velvet Revolver camp have been swirling around the group for the past few months, with several reports suggesting that the much of the strife between Slash and the rest of the camp stems from Slash's wife Perla's alleged involvement in the band's business affairs. The situation allegedly came to a head the previous week after an attempt was made by attorneys to mediate the matters related to the lawsuits followed by Slash, as well as Duff McKagan against GNR from an Axl Rose over the rights to the old songs and the rumors continued to gain strength a few days later when unconfirmed reports surfaced that Slash had picked up his gear from Velvet Revolver's rehearsal studios after allegedly announcing he was leaving the group. Now even Axl Rose's representative had to put out a statement shooting down persistent rumors that former GNR member Slash, Izzy and Duff were in talks with Rose about taking part in a reunion tour this summer. Now not only was Slash rumored to be going back to Guns N' Roses, at one point in 2006, Matt Sorum was rumored to be going back to Guns N' Roses as well. Here's an interview with him from that time period asking him about those alleged rumors. In yet another Guns N' Roses related rumor going around the internet, the latest is that drummer Matt Sorum will rejoin Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses for the new album and a tour. The current Velvet Revolver and ex-cult skin basher was amused by the reports. Sorum told us that his part in the Guns N' Roses story seems like another person's life. You know, I, I haven't really thought about Axel in a long time, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I kind of left that behind me in 1996. <laughs> That's 10 years ago. That's a whole other lifetime. You know, I was in that band, you know, but I look at it like it was somebody else's movie. <laughs> you know, the, we got off the road in 1993. That was the last time Guns N' Roses played. So that's been... Uh, 
13 years since I played in that band, really. And, uh, you know, I've done, I've done five, six albums since then, and, you know, 10 tours, and, you know, and Axel hasn't done, so I don't know, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Now, there was even magazine articles printed saying Axel offers millions to reform GNR. So one magazine article claimed that, did Axel try to get the classic lineup back together? Are GNR playing two dates in the UK this summer? Did Slash call Duff spineless? What is going on? So according to the article, an alleged attempt by Axel Rose to reform Guns N' Roses with most of its original members appears to have sparked a vicious war of words and a series of lawsuits. According to a Guns N' Roses insider, the current acrimony between Axel and former GNR members and Velvet Revolver frontman Scott Weiland would stem from an extraordinary offer made by Axel to his former colleagues to reform the band. A few months ago, the rock rumor mill went into overdrive when whispers that Axel was going to reunite with Slash, Duff, Izzy, and drummer Matt Sorum for an appearance at this year's Download Festival. Now, when GNR's uh, for da uh, Download Festival rumors were confirmed last month, it seemed like the classic case of Chinese whispers. Guns were playing, but what? who could we expect to see? Axel, Buckethead, and a load of hired, well, guns? But an inside source in the GNR campus sensitively revealed to Classic Rock magazine that attempts were made to reform the classic lineup of the band in the last few months, and that Slash, Duff, Izzy, and Matt were all interested. Now, according to our insider, Axel approached the former members of GNR with a proposal to reunite for two gigs, and one was this year's Download Festival, and the other the following week was at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Both would be filmed and recorded for a DVD and live album, and each member would receive millions in payments. One source claimed that Slash Duff, Izzy, and Matt Sorum all loved the idea, but not only was the money good, it was a perfect way of making the 20th anniversary of GNR until someone's lawyer got had a good luck had a good look at the contract. It's alleged that the small print stated that in agreeing to the terms and conditions, all rights to the GNR name and back catalog would transfer to Axel, and negotiations ended. Now, from what the band members have said, this doesn't seem to be a true story that the band was ever going to reform in 2006, but Slash was on Howard Stern's show in 2012, where at that point he said he didn't see a GNR reunion happening and saying that they were offered, they'd probably be offered boatloads of money to rejoin. Are you missing so, the original Guns N' Roses? I, was I in the original? Are, are you missing the original Guns Are you missing I those days? I don't miss it. Well, it's, it's been a really long time. Um, it is, but, but yet it seems like so... It was, it was, it's one of those kind of things where when it was its, at its coolest was, was um, really sort of before the 90s. Right. And that's something that you, you don't miss something like that. That's like, you know, you, you do something really cool and... And you can't really recreate it, and you don't want to. I don't know. I don't dwell in the past. Like but don't that. you think you could have made? You know, where the music when we were talking about how, you know, bands, they make, they create a sound, and they mm. create a kind of song. Yeah, I'll give you an example. And when they break up, nobody can really create what they did again. Yeah, Slash. Well, you have that stuff that was recorded, which is cool. Yeah, like, but you know, Slash. And, and you, it's, what Robin's referring to is mm. just give, give me a second here to give you the theory. It, the way we see it, <laughs> the way the Stern Show sees it. Um, I was watching uh, Mick Jagger on Saturday Night Live. I don't know if you watched <clears> it at all. <throat> okay, I love Mick Jagger. I love the Stones. And he performed with the Foo Fighters, and he performed with Arcade Fire, and he performed even with Jeff Beck, which Jeff Beck's an incredible guitarist. True. Oh, just my favorite guitar. Yeah, I, I think he maybe is one of uh, certainly one of mine. Yeah. And you know as good as those moments were and it was fun it felt like the old saturday night live when there was something exciting happening it, it when he's not standing there with the stones it's just not the same and i can't put my finger on why i can't tell you exactly i mean all the musicians and the foo fighters are fabulous musicians it just wasn't the stones you know and it's the same thing with guns and roses Forget the money that's on the table. If Axel could get his shit together and get back with you, I mean, I can't even imagine. It would never happen. What? what I know I've asked you this a hundred years ago, but I don't understand what's going on. Like, he hates you. Axel hates you. Well, he, he, you know, I mean, that's pretty obvious, but. But why? Do you do you have any? Do you, have you ever seen a shrink about that? Have you ever said, I got to do some introspection here? What did I do to set this guy off? I know exactly what it was. What was it? I mean, well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, you know, Axel had a plan to sort of take over the whole sort of Guns N' Roses thing. And, and, and we gave up the name and all that kind of stuff. And no one really gave a shit. Right. Um, you know, because the, the premise was, is if it breaks up, then I want to keep the name. If it breaks up, no one cares. You know? Right. And then, and then uh, when he started to put together a new, his own Guns N' Roses, and it was a contract. And I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> and that's, that was it. 
And so it's been, and also because when I first, I mean, I'm just spitballing, but when uh, um, I first joined Velvet Revolver, and I hadn't been asked really too much about uh, the sort of Guns N' Roses stuff, and it brought up a very bitter, you know, so next thing you know, there was this whole sort of press run where I really sort of denounced Axel and that whole thing, and I'm sure that had some stuff to do with it. But what you know, the thing is, is I just I don't dwell on all that stuff. But I mean, I'm not real fond of it either. You're not I, fond of it either. But right? I don't I don't want to I don't want to take that route. I don't have time to be worrying about it, and it's not really outside of dealing with media stuff. It's not really a concern. You know? I guess people don't. Understand. Thanks for watching, guys. That does it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And were you guys following the Velvet Revolver drama back in 2006? Put your comments down below and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for the latest Guns N' Roses news and more cool true stories just like this. And go check us out at GNRCentral.com for the latest and greatest news.